But aside from the well-known interest the ancients had in charting movements of the planets and the relationship of these celestial events or terrestrial events, such as the advent of floods or wars and their effects on the planet, the saga of the celestial sphere recorded the story which began with the first sign and the first house of the zodiac, signifying the birth of consciousness, Aries, ruled by the planet Mars. Why did Aries and the planet Mars hold such an important position in the story of the rebirth of the new celestial year? Why does the first point of Aries continue to this day to hold that critical astronomical position, despite the fact that the zero degree of the celestial new year progressed to the constellation of Pesci uh, over 2,500 years ago and is now almost ready to go into Aquarius. <clears throat> is there some reason why the planet Mars deserves to be examined first for answers to our questions about who we really are? Well, the ancients have begun the zodiac with Leo ruled by the sun, or Cancer ruled by the moon, two celestial bodies which by far have a greater effect on Earth and the psyche than Mars. Or is the layout of the zodiac part of an encrypted terrestrial history which we have somehow forgotten because of some global amnesia? Amnesia perhaps brought on by cataclysmic events such as the periodic shifting of the terrestrial polar axis as depicted in the book Pulse by John White. Indicato da John White nel suo libro Pulse Shift. Events which have periodically wiped out our civilizations and historical records have been chronicled by the records of all ancient peoples, as documented by Emmanuel Velikovsky in his book World in Collision and Earth La Prossima. Not only were the two able to locate this crucial second photo taken 35 days later when the sun was some 20 degrees higher in the Martian sky at about 4 p.m., but they were able to show that the face was a three-dimensional object. They were also able to enhance subtle detail showing by symmetry that there is a second eye, that the hairline goes around, and that the mouth goes through. And even though the face was their main area of concentration, an examination of the surrounding area revealed La Prossima, a 1.5 mile long pyramidal structure sub subsequently named the DNM Pyramid by Richard Holden after Di Pietro and Molinar. 
Pietro e Molinar con i nomi. Richard Hoagland was at JPL when the face on Mars was first displayed to the press corps. Five years later, while attending a conference in Boulder, Colorado, he met with deep Pietro and Molinar, excuse me, who were having a great deal of trouble getting NASA to take the work they had done on the photo seriously. Two years later, Richard agreed to assist the two image specialists by trying to write about their work with the photos, La Prossima. But what ultimately occurred was that he ended up discovering that the face and the pyramid were not alone. La prossima. Uh, Richard's careful observations of the areas beyond the face and pyramid revealed a city. Oh, you go back. Hello? You go back. Okay. Revealed a city to the north and west of the two primary structures. La prossima. Showing other pyramidal objects in various stages of ruin. This by way of a 3D reconstruction by Dr. Mark Carlotto. And an intriguing structure he called the fort. Because of its thick angular walls, you can see here, and its central key. La Prossima. <clears throat> to the east, oh, this is just a, this is a close-up view of the, the fort with its angular walls and the other pyramidal objects. Okay, there are also a cross, as you can see, very small uh, angular objects here and a, and a central one. If you um, measure them, they are diametrically opposite one another and make 90-degree angles. La prossima. Oh, this is also, this is a 3D reconstruction and a close-up of the fort uh, by Dr. Mark Carlotto. You can see the angular regularity in the sides of the walls. La prossima. <clears throat> to the east, he discovered a cliff seemingly built over the remnants of an ancient crater flow. Um, which you can see there's a sight line <coughs> from, this, <coughs> from the uh, five objects in the center of the city, out past the face, which go through the eyes and under the chin, and end up at the uh, northern and southernmost tip of the cliff. La Proxima. Another tetrahedral, and you can, this is, there is a tetrahedral shaped pyramid on the, uh, the side of this crater. And when you measure to the tholus, which I'm going to show you next, uh, it makes a very critical angle, which we're going to talk about, which uh, has to do with tetrahedral geometry. <coughs> uh, and to the south of this cliff crater complex, a curious mound he called the Tholus, La Proxima, which means hill in Latin, and the two together, reminiscent of Avebury Crater, La Proxima, è rimasta bloccata Here is a very and this is Silvery Hill I believe and a very crater to be next La Proxima? No? Well, that disappeared. Okay, 